Welcome to Bang Bang Trading's 30-day bootcamp. We're glad you're here and hope you're ready to learn. Please take your time and pause the video if needed. Hello, I'd like to take a minute and personally welcome you to Bang Bang Trading. My name is Christopher J, the CEO and founder. In this 30-day bootcamp, we are going to teach you everything you will need to become a successful and consistently profitable day trader. I would encourage you to treat this course like it was a college course. If you take it seriously, it will work for you. If you don't, it's not going to work at all. This may seem a little harsh, especially in the beginning of the course, but it's the truth. It's the hard reality of day trading. Here at Bang Bang Trading, we're not here to blow smoke or selling you empty promises. We're here to raise an army of consistently profitable traders. And to do that, you need to be disciplined, responsible, and you're going to need a great deal of patience. Nothing in life is easy. And nothing comes free. So we'll hope you put into learning as much as we did into preparing this course for you. It's a journey like no other. And this course is like none other. So welcome aboard. I'm glad you're here. And I hope to see you at the end of the 30-day boot camp. My best regards Christopher J. Day trading is risky and you could potentially lose everything. There is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. Past results are not indicative of future returns. Bang Bang Trading E-mini Futures and all individuals affiliated with this site assume no responsibilities for your trading and investment results. The indicators, strategies, articles and all other features are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. Information for stock, options, futures, forex and crypto observations are obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but we do not warrant its completeness or accuracy, or warrant any results from the use of the information. Your use of the stock, options, futures, Forex and crypto observations is entirely at your own risk and it is your sole responsibility to evaluate the accuracy, completeness and usefulness of the information. You must assess the risk of any trade with your broker and make your own independent decisions regarding any securities mentioned herein. I understand that the Bang Bang Trading E-mini Futures program will prepare me to actively trade equities, futures, options Forex and or crypto for my own account. I understand that this course is not preparation to be a licensed broker in the financial industry or will help me get a job. The Bang Bang Trading E-mini Futures program should not be construed as a recommendation or an offer to buy or sell any security or the suitability of any investment strategy for a student. The purchase, sale, or advice regarding any security, other financial instrument or system can only be performed by a licensed industry representative such as but not limited to a broker, dealer, introducing broker, FCM and and or registered investment advisor. Neither Bang Bang Trading E-mini Futures nor its representatives are licensed to make such advisements. All purchases or free attendees of Bang Bang Trading E-mini Futures products are encouraged to speak with a licensed representative of their choice regarding the appropriateness of investing and or trading or of any particular investment and or trading strategy. Establishing an equity position in a margin account requires you to pay 50% or more of its full value. With futures, the required initial margin amount is typically set between 3 to 10% of the underlying contract value. That leverage gives you the potential to generate larger returns relative to the amount of money invested, but it also puts you at risk of losing more than your original investment. What are futures? Futures are a type of derivative contract agreement to buy or sell a specific commodity asset or security at a set future date for a set price. Futures contracts, or simply futures, are traded on futures exchanges like the CME Group and require a brokerage account that's approved to trade futures. NASDAQ 100 futures are commodities futures products traded within the equity futures sector. The two most highly traded products are the E-mini NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ 100, which track a basket of the largest 100 non-financial stocks, NASDAQ 100 index, listed on the NASDAQ exchange. Diversification Futures provide a few ways to diversify your investing in ways stocks and ETFs can't. They can give you direct market exposure to underlying commodity assets versus secondary market products like stocks. 
Additionally, they allow you to access specific assets that aren't typically found in other markets. Futures might also be used if you are looking for strategies designed to help manage some risk surrounding upcoming events that could move the markets. Futures are contracts with expiration dates, while stocks represent ownership in a company. Are futures more risky than stocks? Futures, in and of themselves, are not any riskier than other types of investments, such as owning equities, bonds, or currencies. That is because futures prices depend on the prices of those underlying assets, whether it is futures on stocks, bonds, or currencies. Security futures risks All security futures contracts involve risk, and there is no trading strategy that can eliminate it. Strategies using combinations of positions, such as spreads, may be as risky as outright long or short futures positions. Trading in security futures requires knowledge of both the securities and the futures markets. Security futures, know your risks, or risk your future. Federal regulations permit trading in futures contracts on single stocks, also known as single stock futures or SSFs, and narrow-based security indices. This article describes what security futures are, how they differ from stock options, some of the risks they can pose, and how they are regulated. Security futures involve a high degree of risk and are not suitable for all investors. As with any investment, if you don't understand it, you shouldn't buy it. With security futures, you may lose a substantial amount of money in a very short period of time. The amount you may lose is potentially unlimited and can exceed the amount you originally deposit with your broker. This is because trading in security futures typically involves a high degree of leverage, with a relatively small amount of money controlling assets having a much greater value. Investors who are uncomfortable with this level of risk should not trade security futures. Security futures contract specifications Contract size Each security futures contract has a set size. The size of a security futures contract is determined by the regulated exchange on which the contract trades. For example, a security futures contract for a single stock may be based on 100 shares of the underlying stock. For narrow-based security indices, the value of the contract is the price of the component securities times the multiplier set by the exchange as part of the contract terms. Contract month, the month when the contract expires. There will be several different contract months available for trading at any one time, and the number of contract months may vary from exchange to exchange. Contract expiration, last trading day, the expiration of a security futures contract is established by the exchange on which the contract is listed. On the expiration day, the contract terminates. Typically, the last trading day of a security futures contract will be the third Friday of the expiring contract month, and the expiration day will be the following Saturday. Manner of settlement. Security futures may be settled by physical delivery of the underlying security or cash settlement. The terms of the contract dictate whether it is settled by cash or physical delivery. Contract expiration and delivery. Any futures contract that hasn't been liquidated by an offsetting transaction before the contract's expiration date will be settled at that day's settlement price. The terms of the contract specify whether a contract will be settled by physical delivery, receiving or giving up the actual shares of stock, or by cash settlement. Where physical delivery is required, a holder of a short position must deliver the underlying security. Conversely, a holder of a long position must take delivery of the underlying shares. Where cash settlement is required, the underlying security is not delivered. Rather, any security futures contracts that are open are settled through a final cash payment based on the settlement price. Once this payment is made, neither party has any further obligations on the contract. Margin and leverage When a brokerage firm lends you part of the funds needed to purchase a security, such as common stock, the term margin refers to the amount of cash or down payment the customer is required to deposit. By contrast, you should be aware that a security futures contract is an obligation and is not an asset. The contract has no value as collateral for a loan. When you enter into a security futures contract, you are required to pay a margin deposit or performance bond. 
These are good faith deposits to ensure your performance of obligations under the contract rather than down payments for the underlying securities. For a relatively small amount of money, the margin requirement, a futures contract worth several times as much can be bought or sold. The smaller the margin requirement in relation to the underlying value of the futures contract, the greater the leverage. Because of this leverage, small changes in the price of the contract can result in large gains and losses in a short period of time. Margin requirements for security futures contracts would be set by the exchange on which the contract is traded, subject to certain minimum standards set by law. The basic margin requirement is 15% of the current value of the security futures contract, although some strategies may have lower margin requirements. It is important to understand that individual brokerage firms can, and in many cases do, require margin that is higher than the exchange requirements. Additionally, margin requirements may vary from brokerage firm to brokerage firm. Importantly, a brokerage firm can increase its house margin requirements at any time without providing advance notice, and such increases could result in a margin call. You should thoroughly read and understand the customer agreement with your brokerage firm before entering into any transactions in security futures contracts. Okay. We get it. It seems pretty boring. Hi I'm Tommy the Life and it will be appearing throughout the boot camp to make sure you're awake. We know you'd rather be out at the beach or going on a vacation. But in reality day trading in and of itself is boring. But if you become one of the profitable ones you'll be well on your way to living the life you always dreamed of. So hang in there just a few more slides to go. And your trading journey will be on its way. Wishing you the best of luck Tommy the Life. Margin and leverage continued. This is only an example, assuming a security futures contract is for 100 shares of stock. If a security futures contract is established at a contract price of $50, the contract has a nominal value of $5,000. Currently, federal regulatory standards prescribe that margin requirements may be as low as 15%, which would require a margin deposit of $750. Assume the contract price rises from $50 to $53, a $300 increase in the nominal value. This represents a $300 profit to the buyer of the futures contract, and a 40% return on the $750 deposited as margin. The reverse would be true if the contract price decreased from $50 to $47. This represents a $300 loss to the buyer, or 40% of the $750 deposited as margin. Thus, leverage can either benefit or harm an investor. Margin and leverage continued. Note that a 6% decrease in the value of the contract resulted in a loss of 40% of the margin deposited. A 15% decrease in the contract price, $50 to $42.50, would mean a drop in the nominal value of the contract from $5,000 to $4,250, thereby wiping out 100% of the margin deposited on the security futures contract. Adverse price movements that reduce the reserve below a specified level will therefore result in a demand from your broker that you promptly deposit additional margin funds to your account. Returning to our earlier example, the 6% decrease in the value of the contract that resulted in the loss of 40% of the margin deposit would reduce the margin deposit to $450, therefore, the account holder would need to deposit $187.50 in the margin account to raise the margin level back up to 15% of the current value of the contract, $4,250. Because of the always present possibility of margin calls, security futures contracts are not appropriate if you cannot come up with the additional funds on short notice to meet margin calls on open futures positions. If you fail to meet a margin call, your firm may close out your security futures position or sell assets in any of your accounts at the firm to cover your margin deficiency. If your position is liquidated at a loss, you will be liable for the loss. Thus, you can lose substantially more than your original margin deposit. Gains and losses 
unlike stocks, gains and losses in security futures contracts are credited or debited to your account every day, based on the settlement price of the contracts at the close of that day's trading. If the daily settlement price of a particular security futures contract rises, the buyer has a gain and the seller a loss. If due to losses your account falls below maintenance margin requirements, you may be required to place additional funds in your account to cover the margin deficiency. Hey wake up, pay attention this is serious. It's me again Tommy the Life. You really need to pay attention to this information. It's the foundation of futures gains and losses and how margin works. You don't want to go broke do you? I didn't think so. Now listen up. And let's continue. Remember I'm always just around the corner and I can see you nodding off. I was hired to help you through the 30 day boot camp successfully. And I'm going to do my job. So let's continue shall we. Differences between futures and stock options. Although security futures share some characteristics in common with stock options, these products differ significantly. Most importantly, an option buyer may choose whether or not to exercise the option by the exercise date. Options purchasers who neither sell their options in the secondary market nor exercise them before they expire will lose the amount of the premium they paid for each option, but they cannot lose more than the amount of the premium. A security futures contract, on the other hand, is a binding agreement to buy or sell. Based upon movements in price of the underlying security, holders of a security futures contract can gain or lose many times their initial margin deposit. Be cautious of claims that you can make large profits from trading futures. Although the high degree of leverage in futures can result in large and immediate gains, it can also result in large and immediate losses. As with any financial product, there is no such thing as a sure winner. You never want to risk more than you're willing to lose or shall I say more than you can afford to lose. Trading is risky and you could potentially lose everything you have. We recommend you trade one contract of the MNQ in the simulator account until you are ready to trade a live account. Both mentally and emotionally and most of all financially. Under some market conditions, it may be difficult to impossible to hedge and liquidate a position. Generally, you must enter into an offsetting transaction in order to liquidate a position in a security futures contract. If you cannot hedge or liquidate your position, any existing losses may continue to mount. Even if you can hedge or liquidate your position, you may be forced to do so at a price that involves a large loss. This can occur, for example, if trading is halted due to unusual trading activity in either the security futures contracts or the underlying security. If trading is halted due to recent news events involving the issuer of the underlying security. If computer systems failures occur on an exchange or at the firm carrying your position, or if the market is illiquid and therefore doesn't have enough trading interest to allow you to get a good price. Always have your broker's emergency trade desk number available and programmed into your phone in case of such an emergency. In addition make sure you have the app downloaded to your phone from the app store as an additional backup plan in case of home internet loss. In addition never enter a trade without a stop loss. Let me repeat myself. Never enter a trade without a stop loss. You may experience losses due to computer systems failures. As with any financial transaction, you may experience losses if your orders cannot be executed normally due to systems failures on a regulated exchange or at the firm carrying your position. Your losses may be greater if your brokerage firm does not have adequate backup systems or procedures. Placing contingent orders, if permitted, such as stop loss and stop limit orders, will not necessarily limit your losses to the intended amount. Market conditions may make it impossible to execute the order or to get the stop price. This is true in any market, whether it be stocks, forex, futures and crypto. This is why we stay out of the markets prior to major news and don't re-enter for several minutes thereafter. Day trading strategies involving security futures pose special risks. As with any financial product, seeking to profit from intraday price movements poses a number of risks, including increased trading costs, greater exposure to leverage and heightened competition with professional traders. Tax implications and benefits. The tax implications of security futures may be complicated. 
you should consult a tax advisor before trading in these products. Futures can provide a potential tax benefit compared to other short-term trading markets. That's because profitable futures traders are taxed on a 60-40th basis, 60% 60 of profits are taxed as long-term capital gains and 40% as ordinary income. Compare that to stock trading, where profits on stocks held less than a year are taxed 100% as ordinary income.